Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to share with you guys a little porch makeover. We have lived in this house for almost two years now. Actually, it's over two years now. We just celebrated our second anniversary. Wow, you think I would remember that. This little side porch, it's off of the master bedroom and bathroom. There's actually an identical porch right above us. I will eventually be doing that one as well. I have always envisioned this space to be some place where I could relax, where I could read a book, where I could sip some coffee, and to be honest, it's mostly been a place where I stored extra things for the baby chickens when they lived in our bathroom and the ducks when they lived in our bathroom. It kind of just became honestly a little bit of like a junk area where I would just kind of toss things like, oh, I don't know what to do with this right now. I'm just going to set it here. So it's been a bit of a mess. It's been a bit of disaster. And as we move into fall and into cooler weather where we can actually be outside without melting, I started dreaming about cool fall days and just sitting out there on the porch, sipping coffee, reading a book. I'm pretending like I have time to do that in my life. I don't have a lot of time to do that, but intentions, right? Good intentions. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. I'm going to take you guys through my little porch makeover and I hope that you enjoy. All right. So very first thing that I started by doing was just obviously cleaning the porch itself. Our whole house could really use a pressure wash, but for right now, I just started with uh, cleaning the siding on our house, which again, we live in South Carolina. It's very humid here. And incidentally, our house, the, the type of siding that it is, it seems to really like to collect mold. Um, so I got this wash at Home Depot that I was completely impressed with. It's probably toxic as heck but man, does it work in getting rid of the mold. So I sprayed this. You're not technically supposed to spray it on wood, but we had quite a bit of mold on the wood as well. So I did, you know, sue me. Okay. Don't sue me, but you know what I mean? Anyways. So I started by just cleaning everything, giving it a nice deep clean. I also decided to paint the door, the outside part of the door. So again, you know, there's lots of things that we still need to do to the exterior of our home. And I've kind of hesitated to paint doors and do things like that because I figure, why would I waste the time if we're going to end up replacing a lot of this stuff in a renovation or all that. But I've kind of just decided that items like this that are not really super expensive, they're just worth it for the overall feel and, you know, the time being. I don't know how long it'll take till we get to that project. So I'm going to make as much as I can enjoyable and things that I really love now and not wait, essentially. So I decided to paint this door. One of the kind of accent colors we've been using in various places on our property is a uh, Benjamin Moore color called oil cloth. It is kind of a grayish green. Um, it definitely, depending on the lighting and what other colors you're putting next to it, it can pull more green or it can pull more gray, but uh, I, I really like the color. And so that is the color that I painted the exterior door. Unfortunately, I had to paint it quite literally multiple times because it was so humid that the paint wouldn't dry before the humidity would start, like the dew would start building up on it and it would streak down the door. So kind of nuts, kind of crazy, probably should have waited, but you know, the weatherman can never really predict anything with any kind of certainty around here. So we just had to take our chances. It was fine. I had just two days of painting the door and then it was fine. To me, this is one of the biggest changes that made the biggest difference. I mean, obviously it would, but it was something that I had never thought about. And that is to paint the wood a color instead of a stain. I have always been a fan of just like natural wood tones. I mean, this cabin, all of that. I love the natural wood tones, but I got to thinking about 
the elements of these peaceful, calming places that I've been, I've visited, I've traveled. You guys, if you've been around here any amount of time, then you probably already know how much I love Charleston. We too live in low country South Carolina. So I, I just love that kind of like low country Southern feel. And so I decided to paint the porch kind of a white color. Now, I had actually chosen a different color at the store. However, the guy working at the paint counter had convinced me that because they didn't have the product that went with the color, that I should choose a color from the Valspar line because he said it would likely function better with the product. I don't know that there's actually any truth to that at all. And I kind of am kicking myself because the original color definitely pulled slightly more gray, whereas this color that I used, and I will link all the, I'll link everything down below, but I'll link all the colors because of course I don't remember it off the top of my head, but uh, it was like a cream color and it definitely pulls a little bit more pink. So I won't be using it on any of our other porches, but I do really, really like this painting of the porch with this porch paint, that's what it's for. Um, I will again link the product down below. It's a Valspar product, what we used. It's a porch paint. It's meant to paint wood porches um, and decks and things. It's a sealant, it protects the wood. You don't have to put anything else on top of it. I'm quite impressed with it. It was super easy to apply. Um, it dried very quickly and uh, I was really, really impressed with it. The color leaning a little bit pink doesn't actually bother me all that much, um, given I feel like with the rest of the porches you'll see at the end, it all just kind of ties together and it works, but I couldn't help but notice that against the White House that it was definitely pulling a little bit pink. So keep that in mind. I'll put the color we used, uh, but just keep that in mind. Next was to replace the ceiling fan. There was a very old and um, quite dingy and dangerous ceiling fan. Uh, the kind that, you know, is like shaking when it spins where I'm like, I don't know if I want to turn that on. I feel like it's going to fall and cut my head off. So I replaced it with a indoor outdoor fan that I got. I think I got this one at Lowe's. I'll have to look again. I'll link it. I didn't want to bring in anything too over the top cheesy. So I like the uh, sort of palm leaf blades. I feel like, I don't know, it just adds a little bit of charm without being too over the top, especially when the fan is spinning. You can't even tell that their leaves, but it just, I liked it better than a plain black or a plain white fan for out there. So my husband did install that for me. The box said it was a fast, easy install, but he offered to do it. And so of course I was gonna take him up on that. And then I also hung the curtains. This was something that I'd kind of envisioned when I had envisioned this, you know, super relaxing, dreamy porch space. And I got these curtains and the curtain rods from Amazon. And I have to say, I looked for quite a while. I looked at some various options at Wayfair for curtains and they were really expensive for the outdoor curtains. You know, they need to typically be pretty tall, uh, long and also wide. And uh, the only thing that I didn't take into account, so I will have to go back and order more, was the fact that because it is a longer space, I would have a bracket in the middle of my curtain rod, which would not allow the curtain to pull all the way across even if it was long enough. So I got 100 inch wide curtains for the front part of the porch. And um, because of the uh, brackets, I can't actually pull them all the way across, even though they technically would be long enough. So I'll need to hang some more curtains in the corners. I probably need to order four more curtain panels in order to be able to actually fully enclose the porch should I want to do that. Um, but I also went ahead and scotch guarded the curtains. Now they are exterior curtains. They're meant for use outdoors, but I just wanted to, again, with how humid things get here and how it can get, things can just get like moldy really fast. I decided to go ahead and uh, scotch guard them. So this is just a step that I have tried to get better about doing with anything that we keep outside now. So any kind of fabric material, outdoor furniture, uh, scotch guard makes a number of different products for this purpose. Uh, they make one for your outdoor umbrella. They make one for furniture. Uh, there's a number of different options. And I also have purchased things, products like this, protective products like this for our outdoor tables and stuff. Just like I said, uh, the weather here, it can rain and be very hot and humid all in the same day. And that is just a recipe for mold and like scum to build up on things. So once my door was painted, the floor was painted, my curtains were hung, the fan was hung. I really was so excited about this part. This is actually the 
thing that inspired me to go ahead and do this project was that I found this Papazon chair at World Market on clearance. I would imagine it was part of like their end of end of summer clearance, but it was very affordable for what it is. It's a really nice, it had great reviews at the time. Who knows, the reviews could have changed since then, but the reviews were good when I purchased it. I will see if I can find either that one still in stock or something similar to link for you guys. But this oversized Papazon chair, it is so comfortable. It's awesome. I love it. Um, and I decorated it with some pillows from Better Homes and Gardens that I got from Walmart, uh, as well as this lovely, lovely little like kind of uh, chunky knit throw blanket that I got on Amazon. In all honesty, I'll just go ahead and tell you the blanket I keep inside in the bathroom and I bring it out when I want to use it because it would just get gross out there on the porch. You know, the pillows are great. They're outdoor okayed pillows. Um, and the other thing I do is if I know it's going to rain, I do typically pull the curtains to kind of protect the things that are here. So I just really fell in love with this little like kind of sagey green side table. Um, these plant stands that I found from Amazon. I just really wanted to give, again, the whole space just like a, a relaxing vibe, a chill vibe. And one of the things that I have learned from following a woman online on Instagram who's like an interior designer, home designer kind of person, is that um, adding lamps in various places of your home and uh, places you might not think it can just really change the feel. It can change the ambiance of the whole space. And so I did purchase a kind of like sea glass colored lamp from Amazon to put on this table. It's not arrived yet, of course. I honestly kept waiting and putting off this video, but then the shipment got delayed. So I was like, forget it. I have to do the video without the lamp. It's really, really beautiful. And I think it's gonna look really beautiful in that space when it is all said and done. And of course I did go ahead and add our little three piece set that I got from Walmart a few months back. I've got some citronella candles out there because well, it is fall. Cause even in the fall here in the South, we still do deal with some skeeters from time to time. So I've got my citronella candles out here to make that a little bit more pleasant. I like most of you am a busy mom with a very full life and I take my relaxation pretty seriously. Okay. I really like to find ways to recharge. I think it's important to find ways to take care of yourself. And for me, that looks like just a cozy little spot that I can read or return a phone call to a friend and just kind of have just this little space that feels a little bit like a respite, a little bit like a vacation. I'm sure you guys have heard the saying, and I've heard it a million times over the years that, you know, you should make your life a, a something that you don't need a vacation from, right? Instead of spending all this money on elaborate vacations, just make your life something you don't need a vacation from. Well, I feel like that's a little bit easier said than done, but I will say that one of the things I have have found is that by creating these little spaces, these little oases in my home or in my routine, things like that are just a really great way to bring a little bit of something special and extra to the ordinary. And I just think that to me, that's worth it. It's worth the little extra bit of joy that it brings me to sip my coffee there, chat with my husband. I can see right into the barnyard and chat with my llamas and our goats and pigs and, you know, all of our different animals. And it's just, it's, it's an awesome space. I love it so much. I'm so glad that I went ahead and did this. I'm definitely going to be tackling our front porch very soon. And I cannot wait because I've totally been inspired by this side porch to make some changes and I cannot wait to do the front porch project and I will share that with you guys as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the transformation and I will see you again very soon. Bye.